After CRISPR Analyzer has finished running the analysis, you will see this pop-up telling you that the analysis is done. Just click on close and head on to the next session. After you've finished your setup your screen and the analysis is done, you can go on for the screen quality control which offers features such as fast cube data quality control, overview about your screen read count information, sgRNA coverage, a sample comparison, principal component analysis and heat maps using different visualization features. We go on with the fast queue data quality and the first thing that you notice is that when you upload a read count data, of course no fast queue quality information is present. So let's go on with the screen read count. As with all different pages, you can click here for a help that shows actually what is shown on each individual page. First you find a brief summary of the read count statistics for all the files aggregated for gene level read count or individual sgRNAs like mean, median, minimum, maximum, standard deviation and if there are sgRNAs or genes missing. What you can see here is that 166 out of 12,000 sgRNAs were missing in the sample data set. This means that a read count of zero has been detected. After the overview you can look for distributions, which is a pseudodensity plot and the box plot distribution. This is a log to read count distribution of your samples. You can inactivate or activate different samples. And by this, clearly see how the read count is distributed. And you'll notice the missing SGN is here at the zero. You can also zoom in, go back or download the plot as a PNG file, JPEG, PDF or whatever you like. I like to download it as a PNG file, so I click on it and the data will be downloaded to your folder. The box for distribution is in principle the same. Then you can go on. If you have set controls, those controls will be highlighted here in a similar way, giving you a brief overview showing the median and the mean for each of the controls in each of the data set. You can always click in every table and sort it according to your needs. If you like to download this table, you can directly copy it to your clipboard, print it, download it as a comma separated file, formatted Excel file or as a PDF. This is for all the tables. As a next step, we included a so-called read death plot, which shows you the read count for a certain gene divided by the number of sgRNAs, giving you a rough estimation if you have skewed data. So for PBS, for untreated control, you can see that it's there are just a few pikes coming up. For trail data set that have been selected with a trail ligand, you can clearly see that the read count divided by the number of sgRNAs is really high for our positive controls. You can also see that there are other genes showing up in addition to it. If you like this plot, you can just download the plot as it is. And if you want to zoom in to get more information, you can just go to do so and zoom in and check out the individual gene features. As a last step, there is the read count section where you can actually browse through your read count raw data in a more convenient way. You can select the read count per gene where you have to when you can also select the data set or you can look for sgRNA information. So you can see every sgRNA and the read count for each of the data set at once. Please mind, you can also extend the table, sort the table, and what you can also do is you can look, you can search in a full text search for caspase 8 and then only those with caspase 8 as a gene symbol or within the name are shown. That's quite handy. If you want to download especially all the data for KSPS8, you just click on show all, which is a long list, and then you can copy it to the clipboard, or you can download it as comma separated file or as an Excel file. It's just as easy as that. Okay, now we are in the SGRNA coverage section of the screen quality control, which shows you in case you have not removed sgRNAs with a low read count, how many sgRNAs or genes were not present in your dataset. You can see that at least 
a one sgRNA for each gene is still present, but you can also see that for our untreated controls, 166 and 141 out of 12,000 sgRNAs are missing, and after trial treatment, we lost roughly 800 sgRNAs out of our 12,000 sgRNAs. This is for a drug enrichment screen unexpected behavior. You can also see the percentage of missing non targeting sgRNAs. This should be more or less the same. It's good quality control and the same for your positive uh, controls. You can also check the designs per gene, which means that, for example, in our PBS1 dataset, for 282 genes, we have 99 to 100% of all sgRNAs, and there are five genes that only show between 89 and 90% of all sgRNAs present. If you look for a trail treatment dataset, um, it is a bit further, so only in 90, uh, 69 genes have nearly 100% of all sgRNAs, whereas in here, 12 genes only show 78 to 80% of sgRNAs present, and there's even one gene that just has 70 to 72 percent of all sgRNAs present in the data. Another nice feature of the screen quality section is the sample comparison. Again, click here on the help for more detailed information what it offers. So in general, the screen quality section gives you an overview, directly comparing, for example, the log 2 4 change distribution for different samples. And again, what you see here is that for, if you compare the four changes of both replicates of the untreated group, the fault change is really, really low. The same is if you compare the two treatment groups. But it is higher if you compare between the treatment groups and between the treatment groups. Um, yeah. Okay. You can go on with pairwise comparisons if you like. So this means you can check for different ranking of gene fault changes, ratios, or sgRNA fault changes between any sample. You can just click here and compare individual sample comparisons. If you want to go on, you can also get a scatterplot matrix that gives you an overview of how your data is compared. So this is the overall pairwise correlation, which means these are our two PBS1 replicates, these are the two trail replicates. You can see the individual correlation between those samples, which is pretty high. And here you have the gene level read counts shown with in blue the non-targeting control and in red the positive controls. You can also show this plot on a log2 transformation scale, which is a bit more handy. Everything that is on the same diagonal is more or less exactly the same. What is expected between the replicates, it's a bit more noisier between the treatments, but it's a clear difference visible between the untreated samples and the treated samples, with a clear tendency of the positive controls to show a higher read count in our treatment samples. If you want to have this plot included in your report, click Add to Report and Chris Bernhardt will tell you that this section has been added to your report. You can go on with some scatter plots for more detail. So here you can compare different data sets individually, in our case the two PBS treatment groups, um, and you can see that all genes are more or less along the line. You can hover and see the gene information, but you can also compare, for example, one treatment with the other treatment replicate. So now the trail is here and you can clearly see that the two positive controls are highly enriched in your treatment data set. You can also select and put the plot in a log2 transformation scale. And if you like to know what certain uh, dots are, you can just click here and the hover will tell you the gene identifier. If you like, you can also have a look closer by zooming in. going back or just downloading the plot as a PNG file if you like or add this report add this plot to your report. If you also like you can get this plot shown on sgRNA level. Please be patient since this depends on the computer speed that you have for visualization of the data. And now you can see 
each is gRNA of the positive controls shown in red color, of the non-targeting controls showing in blue color. And if you don't want to see them, you can just ignore them by deselecting them here on the bottom. This will also take a couple of seconds, depending on your computer speed. After you have deselected a positive control, you can see that all of the sgRNAs have been removed from the plot. We can go back on, for example, for the gene level read count and also plot the two mean replicates against each other. If you want to know a bit more about certain genes that are included, you can select multiple genes here to highlight. This is a so-called fuzzy search, so you can just start typing and the CRISPR analyzer will tell you which genes are included. Let's have a look at caspase 3. Caspase 3 is highlighted in orange color. If you include more genes, like cask, will be also shown in orange color. Once you have changed something here in this, don't forget to click to add to report to really add this individual report that you have just created. Add this plot to your report. You can add multiple plots if you like. And once you have changed things here, hit the button and it will be added to the report. As the next feature, CRISPR Analyzer offers a principal component analysis. Click for the help to find the paper where it has nicely explained what a PCA can do on your data. The principal component analysis plot is shown here and it shows as trajectories your different data sets and the observations as points. You can zoom in for a more detailed view and you can also download this visualization as it is to your computer. The PCA is automatically added to your report and is still interactive later on. So have a closer look at your data and in case your replicates show exactly the same effect, it will be as here that both of the treatment replicates show a trajectory going into the exactly same direction for the treated and for the untreated. As a last step in the quality control, CRISPR Analyzer offers you some heat map visualizations. By default, all heat maps are clustered using UPGMA and you can select different type of information like gene abundance, gene read count, the top or lowest 5% of your genes as gRNA abundance or as gRNA read count. So let's go for a gene abundance. I would have the plot really, I would like to have it on a log 10, like or go log 10 scale. So I just click create heat map and CRISPR analyzer is calculating the heat map for me. Please be patient as depending on the library size, this can take some time. And once the heat map is finished, it will show up in this box. While we are waiting, you could click here for help to see more information what each of the types of data you can select will be. Okay, so this is now the heat map. And what you can see here is it has been clustered and you can clearly identify the four different data sets that we have uploaded and you can clearly see that something has been clustered here. You can zoom in to have a close inspection of the data. If you want to have this as a plot, you can directly download the visualization as an image or reset the zoom again. If you don't want to have this as a log 10, you just click deactivate it. If you want to have this plot as it is in your report, you click Act to Report, the heat map is added. And then we can create the same heat map without the log 10 scale. As I said, depending on the speed on which CRISPR analyzer runs, which computer it runs, it can take some time. Also, the heat map visualization takes some time in case your computer you're using for visualization these data is a bit slow. 
So this is now without a log 10 scale and you can clearly see a difference here. So we can again zoom into this interesting region and can clearly see that our two positive controls nicely cluster together. If you want to have this visualization stored, just click on Add to Report and exactly this visualization is stored into your report.